One of the great psalms of uh, the Hebrew Tehillim, the Psalter, the Psalter is Psalm 104. I would like to read it in Hebrew and make comments, some grammatical comments, but mainly interpretational comments. It begins, Barachi nafshi et Adonai, Adonai Elohai gadalta ma'od, od v'hadar levashta. Notice, bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with glory and majesty. Notice he begins with the Lord's praise because of his greatness as the creator. And uh, in this verse, Lavashti is your cow perfect second masculine singular from Lavash. So you are clothed with glory and honor. O teor ta salma no te shamayim kayeria. That is, who covers yourself. Uh, as with a garment, as light, or who covers, we could say, with light, as a garment, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. Uh, notice in this verse, we have two participles, ote, to cover, uh, cal, uh, participle, masculine singular, and no, no te uh, to stretch out. So we have two participles, both beginning with an O vowel, uh, followed by a tsere. So you cover yourself with light as a garment, and you stretch out the heavens like a curtain. I'm reminded of Genesis 1, where the Lord slides the disc between the waters and stretches out the waters, as it were. And so here we have the imagery of stretching out the heavens, as it were, and creating uh, the beautiful work of creation that we find in Genesis chapter 1. And then he goes on, verse 3, hum you lay the beams of your upper chambers in the waters. Notice uh, we see the Lord here, uh, the beautiful picture of God's heavenly abode, as it were, uh, floating on the waters above. And he goes on to say, uh, Hasam Avim uh, Rechuvo, who makes clouds your chariot. So he literally rides over the clouds. There was a, a text in Ugaritic where Baal rides the clouds. So the real rider of the clouds is the Lord who lays the beams of his upper chambers in the waters that he has divided. And then, Ham uh, Halek al Ruach, who walks upon the winds, uh, excuse me, upon the wings of the wind. Again, we see the Lord uh, walking and controlling the winds. And I'm reminded of Jesus, where he tells the wind to be quiet in the Gospels. It is interesting here that we have a uh, PL, a participle, in Hamehale, from the root halak, to walk. Notice we have a Shiva Pathak, doubling of the middle radical. So who walks upon the wings of the wind. And notice Confe is a plural noun with a tseriyot and construct with ruach. 
So we're looking at the Lord's greatness again. Uh, he is greater than Baal for sure. He is the one who makes the clouds his chariot and he walks upon the wings. He reveals uh, the wings of the wind. He, he reveals himself really, we could say, in the whirlwind, in the wind, we see the Lord's greatness. Then we come to the creation. Uh, we continue. Osei melechav ruchot, mesharatav esh lo eit. Notice who makes his messengers winds and his ministers a flaming fire. Notice Oseh is again another cow, a participle masculine singular with the O vowel in the seri. And here we're talking about his angels that are like his, that are his messengers. And Mesharatav, uh, his ministers, a flaming fire. Uh, the flaming fire here is looking no doubt at lightning. And so literally, it seems to be saying that he makes his uh, winds to be his messengers. And a flaming fire, lightning, uh, his ministers. And so that would be an understanding of the text, again, staying with creation. It is also interesting in the book of Hebrews, uh, the angels are his ministers. And uh, this word melechav uh, can also be rendered as angels in the Greek, angelos. And so uh, basically angels are also his messengers or his ministers by way of application uh, seen uh, through New Testament as well. But then we move on in verse 5 and following. We see how he lays the foundation of the earth and we see his creation now uh, going back to Genesis. Notice it reads, Yasad Eretz al Mechoneha, you establish the earth upon its foundations, and then Baal Timot Olam Ed, that it should not be moved forever and ever. Notice Baal is the negative uh, not, negative particle, and uh, to mot is from the root mot, to move. Uh, notice it should not be moved. Here we have a nifal, a form here, imperfect, uh, going back to edits, that it should not be moved, third feminine singular. So, you have established the earth upon its foundations that it, that is the earth, should not be moved. And by the way, that dogish in the mim is because the noon of uh, the nifal, uh, tin, uh, has assimilated into that uh, mim. So it should not be moved. And then we move on to home. Kalavush Kisiti. That is, you laid or you covered uh, the deep as with a garment or a vesture. Uh, you covered it as, that is, the deep, the tahom. Remember in Genesis 1, the Lord uh, actually uh, takes the tahom and creates the upper and lower waters, the uh, atmospheric heaven. So you cover, he says, the tahom or the deep uh, as a garment. And notice uh, ka levush means vesture or garment. And then kisito, you cover it. Notice we have a PL perfect uh, from the root to cover. 
uh, with a pronominal suffix, third masculine singular. So you cover it as with a vesture. The waters stood above, or the waters stood above the mountains. Above the mountains, the waters stood. And from your rebuke, though, min ga'aratacha yenusun, from your rebuke, they fled. In other words, the Lord spoke, and it's describing how he created the dry land. Uh, he said, let there be a yabasha, a dry land. And so we're seeing by his rebuke, the waters fled, and men amha yeha fezun. That is, at the voice of your thunder, they hurried away, or they hasted away. So the Lord speaks, and he divides the waters. And he's picturing how the mountains rose in the valleys uh, uh, sank down. Notice he says, Ya alu harim yirudu bikaot. That is, the mountains uh, went up. This is from the root Allah to ascend, a lamed hay verb, a cow imperfect, third uh, common, third person plural. So the mountains rose and the valleys went down. Uh, Yeradu, from Yarad, to go down. So the valleys went down unto the place, al makom Yasata Lahim, the place uh, which you uh, founded for them, for them to be. So again, we're having this beautiful picture of the mountains rising, the valley sinking, and the Lord creating the earth. So then we go on in verse 9, Gavul Santa Balya Avorum. That is, you set a boundary, a boundary you set that they should not pass over. Again, notice Ya Avorun means to pass over from avar, cal, imperfect, third uh, person plural, that they should not pass over, bao yeshuvun lechasot ha'aretz, that they should not pass over and they should not return uh, to cover the earth. Notice lechasot, is a PL infinitive construct from the root to cover. So he's setting a boundary for the waters, the seas, that they would not return and cover the earth again at all. So then in verse 10, uh, he's now going to talk about how he's created uh, springs and the rain. Notice Hameshalach or Hameshaleach Mayanim Banechalim. You send forth springs in the valleys. And so you're creating springs, a beautiful picture in the valleys. And notice the participle here, Hameshaleach, from Shalach to send forth. We have an article in the ha, followed by the mem prefix with the shiva, the pathak, doubling of the middle radical. So we're looking at a, a pl participle in hameshaleach. So you send forth springs, mayanim, uh, in the valleys, baneh halim. Baneh halim uh, means valleys. And they run between the mountains. Bein harim yehalechun. That is, they run between the mountains. And notice halak means to, to flow or to uh, actually run in the sense of flowing. Here we have a shiva 
pathok, doubling of the middle consonant in the lamed, and so we're looking at a pl again, a pl imperfect uh, third person plural. So between the mountains, they run and they give drink to the beast of the field. Notice yashku kol chayet kol chayeto sadai. They drink or they cause uh, to drink all the wild beasts of the field. Uh, from shaka to drink, this hifil imperfect third uh, plural here form. And the wild asses quench their thirst. Yisbaru feraim sema'am. And again, we have a cow imperfect third uh, masculine uh, plural from shabar to, to quench. And notice seva'am means their thirst. That am is your pronominal suffix, third masculine plural. So they drink. Uh, every uh, beast of the field, they give drink to them, and the wild asses quench their thirst. And notice the beautiful imagery here, beside them, the fowl of heaven dwell. Alehem of hashemayim yishkon, that is, the birds of heaven dwell beside them on these uh, beautiful, uh, can we say, springs that the Lord has created, <clears throat> and from among the branches they sing. Mibain afaim yitanu ko. They give their voice, really. And notice yitanu is from natan uh, to give. We have a pay noon verb where the noon has assimilated into the top. In the imperfect here, a third. Uh, person plural, masculine plural. So from between the branches, they give their voices or their voice. And then he goes on to say, who waters the mountains uh, from, uh, from the upper chambers. In other words, a beautiful imagery here that the Lord is watering the mountains from his upper chambers in the heavens, and he's going to provide rainfall, which will bring food. So notice, uh, as we read on then, uh, he waters the mountains, mashkeharim, me'aliyotav, uh, from uh, his upper chambers, and the earth is full of the fruit of your works. Nipurei ma'asecha tisba. Artist. So the earth is full of the fruit of your works. Uh, by the way, shaka means to water. Here we have a hifil participial form, masculine singular from shaka. So he waters the mountains from his upper chambers. What a beautiful picture here of the Lord, as it were, sending down rain from his upper chambers where he dwells. Beautiful poetic picture. And as we move on then, the earth is full of the fruit of his works. Uh, uh, from the fruit of, his, of your works, the earth is full. Uh, notice tisba, is from sabah to be satiated or full. And so the earth is plentifully taken care of by what the Lord is causing to happen from the heavens as he brings rain upon the earth. And so now in verse 14 <clears throat> to 18, he's going to talk about how uh, he's created food. Notice verse 14. Matzmiya chatzir la behema, that is, he causes the grass to spring up for the cattle or for the domesticated beast. Notice matzmiya is from tzamach to spring up. Here again we have a hifil 
participle masculine singular with your mim prefix in your AI vowel pattern. And the herb uh, for the service of man, the asiv la avodat ha adam, the herb of the field for the service of man, to bring forth bread from the earth, lehotsi lecha min ha adas. Notice lehotsi, to cause to bring forth, is from the root yatsa, to bring forth. Historically, this root was a um, pei vav verb, and we had in this hifil uh, infinitive construct, no doubt, lehotsi becoming lehotsi, where we had an a uh, u or an a vav becoming a long hole in vav. But it is a hifil infinitive construct to bring forth bread from the earth. So he causes grass to spring up for the domesticated beast. He causes herb, herbs, uh, herbs for the service of man. And he brings forth bread from the earth, causes it to happen. Wine that makes glad the heart, the yayan yesamach levav anosh. Wine that makes glad the heart of man. Notice yesamach is a pl imperfect third masculine singular from samach. Again, your shema, your shava patha, doubling of the middle radical, giving it away as a pl imperfect third person. Lehatzil panim. Mishaman, that is to cause uh, the face of to to cause actually to make the face brighter than oil, or to cause uh, the face to be uh, bright or brighter. And here we have a comparative min than oil. Uh, meaning to be bright. And notice again. We have a hifil infinitive construct with the hey prefix in the a i vowel pattern, the pathak, the hirik yod, preceded by the lamet. So he brings forth wine to brighten the face of man uh, with oil as well uh, in what he's created. And then bread, the lechem levav anosh yisat. Bread that can I say establishes or sustains or supports uh, man's heart or the heart of man. And notice uh, Yesod is just your cow imperfect, third masculine singular from Sa'at. And then in 16, the trees of the Lord have their fill. Uh, yes, but ooh, I'd say Adonai, or Yispa'u, uh, I'd say Adonai, the trees of the Lord uh, have their fill. Arze Lebanon asher nata, the cedars of Lebanon, which you have planted. And here it's looking at the Lord uh, planting the cedars, and uh, the trees then, he is making them uh, to be, uh, can I say, uh, cedars that are very beautiful that the Lord has planted. And the birds are able to make their nest there. And this would be true of all trees. We love to watch the birds out in our backyard, looking at the trees that the Lord has allowed to be there and to see the birds nesting in their trees or in our trees. And so we move on in verse 17, where the birds make their nest. Asher sham seporim yekanenu, where the birds uh, make their nest, or where they establish their nest. Uh, notice yekanenu is another PL form, uh, PL imperfect, third uh, masculine plural, uh, from kanan to establish or make. And then notice we have uh, chasida beroshim beta. Uh, the stork, probably this word here, 
means a stork, where the stork actually it comes, it's related to a Hebrew word loving kindness. And uh, some have applied this to the great affection that a stork has for its young. But at any rate, uh, where the stork, uh, the fir trees are her house. As for the stork, we could say, Berushim Beita, the fir trees are her house. And notice Beita, A is your pronominal suffix, third of feminine singular. And then the high mountains are for the goats. Harim Hagevoim Laya Elim. The high mountains are for the wild goats. And the rocks, Selaim Maxe Lash Fanim. That is, the rocks are a refuge for the conies. Uh, in other words, they run to the rocks and they hide there. And so what he's picturing here is all of creation that the Lord has created. And I think what I'd like to do is stop there because he's going to move on. And we'll have two parts to this because this is a long sum to talk about the creation of the moon and the sun. And it's a joy for me just to work through this, read the Hebrew, talk about its meaning. But if there's one thing that's coming out of this, it's the Lord as the great creator. And as I look at the New Testament, I see Christ as the creator of everything. We are told in John 1, verse 3, that all things were made by him. Without him, there's not anything made that was made. And so what a beautiful uh, psalm. And I would like to do a second part, finishing it up, looking at the Lord as creator, uh, looking at a few grammatical points, but focusing on the flow of thought of a, a great psalm like this. So if there's one thing that this is focusing upon, it's seeing the Lord as the one who is the creation of everything. And as a Christian, I see the New Testament applying this to Christ.